doesn't feel. Okay, just. Oh. <laughs> OBS. Here you are. Now, this is not quite a wave terrain synthesis, as the name says. What it is, is um, <coughs> cross-fading from one uh, wavetable to another one. And this can be done with wave terrain, of course, but nothing, not everything that can be done with uh, wave terrain synthesis can be done in this manner. What is wave terrain? Wave terrain is the is when you have uh, for every sample in your uh, wave table, you have another wave table which goes to the third dimension, yeah, and so that forms a surface, and this surface can be indexed in a, cer a certain manner, yeah. So you can kind of trace the path to the, in this. Uh, surface so it, it will result with uh, a certain waveform uh, wave cycle and then you can play with this path and so on this can be a kind of a even composition driving method yeah because you can use this surface not only to generate timbre but also to drive the timbre yeah and something like this I will use with on a rather micro level I will use here and I will show how I do it but uh, it's not quite a wave terrain Super Calari has wave terrain uh, uh, unit generator uh, this one is uh, in uh, uh, Super Calari plugins yeah and when if you will try it, you will find out that you actually have to um, have a <coughs> connection in your mind between the surface, the surface equation, and its aesthetical qualities, uh, in order to be productive with this method. And this is uh, rather demanding for the musicians usually. Like, not all musicians are good mathematicians. Uh, so. Uh, that's probably why this method is not widespread. The good uh, wave terrain synthesizer should have very strong and clear uh, guides uh, towards what's going on so that uh, musician will know how to use that method. But again, a musician will have to generate surfaces. Yeah, so the instrument should have an instrument to generate surfaces because if you don't, then you end up with some set of wave surfaces. Waves, terrain surfaces are not that uh, spread as uh, mm, uh, wave table one cycles. <coughs> so, not much variability. Yeah. Uh, and this method that I will display here uh, relies on the VASC oscillator. Uh, that is in super collider. Uh, uh, we ask what we ask allows us is to cross fade from one uh, wave table to another one, and the only uh, condition here is that these wave tables should be consecutively allocated to buffers. Yeah, it should be read by consecutive. Should be. <laughs> Uh, should be loaded to consecutively allocated buffers. So once we have that, we can just specify not the buff num 40, but 40.5, and this will be uh, between those two. You will get something between the the waveform at 40 and waveform at 50, uh, 41. So <coughs> my idea was back in the days to a very known, very popular idea uh, as it is whenever the super collider starts I want to have some waveforms in the memory so that I can use it in my synthesizer and not worry about it I, I just know that they are always there they are assigned to some uh, let's say global variable and that global variable returns an array of the buffer numbers so I can use it in my synthes um, synthesis nodes <coughs> So to do that, I 
downloaded a collection of uh, one cycle one cycle waveforms I founded this website uh, adventurekit.c with a very nice collection you can download it uh, here's the address uh, this is the one this is the link I used and the good thing about this collection is that uh, it has a visual guide to all the waveforms so here you can find them all um, you can see the time domain representation the spectrum so uh, the, the probably the downside or ex extra hassle that we have to do is that uh, we have to resample them because they are 600 samples long not quite the length that super collider unit generators uh, want the wavetable ones yeah the wavetable unit generators uh, they want uh, something at the size of power of 2 so we have to resample them uh, now here's the example I have a uh, directory this is a, this is a Linux system and this is a shell it will look same in Mac but a bit different in, in Windows so take care about that um, so this is a content of some directory and you can see here are the wave files those are the original wave files that I downloaded and uh, in order important thing in order to understand you can see here uh, a path match method uh, passed to a string uh, I want to um, explain what it does so I have a WAV files and something else and want to only uh, see uh, the WAV files, yeah, and I want only to work with WAV files. Now, to do that, the, the Unix shell has that globbing mechanism, which looks like this, for example. This is this character, the star. Or what is that in English? That is Zvezda in Russian. Okay, uh, uh, it um, means like look at the folder and I, at this directory. And if there are any file names with any number of any characters, return that stuff. Like put it to the standard output. And standard output is what we see when the program returns some text. <coughs> so I say this is a list. Yeah, this is a list program, ls, list file names. This tell, tells it like anything. Uh, and then uh, at the end it should be point waf and so now I don't see any uh, of these files like this or this one uh, only waf files yeah now what uh, string where the path match method does it takes you can see the same syntax here yeah? uh, it takes the string takes the generates the full path for the file names and then puts all the file names that it found using the sa same kind of mechanism uh, into an array so that's what I want to do I want to take all of these files all of these WAV files uh, resample them convert them to the wavetable format and then uh, make super collider load them to the consecutively allocated buffers whenever it starts so here's the code this is a rather dirty and fast uh, code you can see I use 100 millisecond weights here <coughs> a more elegant solution would probably use conditions with uh, hangs and all that but I only run it once probably a year ago and forget, for, forgot about it uh, even forgot w what's the file with this text I uh, had to find it in order to uh, show in this video. So, <coughs> what's done here, for every uh, file address in that paths uh, array, I create a new sound file object uh, in order to get an information about the file. The key information that I want is the number of samples. Uh, this num frames uh, method does that uh, then I uh, generate a signal object 
uh, with this number of of this size equal to the number of samples in the original log file. Uh, signal is a float array uh, with some methods for uh, signal processing done on the Supercolaris client side, the SCLang side. And so I just read that data to the to this float array. Then here's the new size for the uh, wavetable file, uh, wavetable waveform. And uh, I just take this uh, floats array and resample it to the new size. The resamp one operation uses linear interpolation. Probably this size is more than what we need. I just saw that uh, Sinask in uh, Sinask help file tells that the, the, the wavetable that Sinask uses is equal to Mm. 8,000, what is that? 2 to the power of 13. Yeah, 2 dot power 13. Okay. <coughs> now, this uh, procedure, uh, resample procedure, resampling procedure, uh, returns array not a signal but I want it to be a signal so again I cast it to a signal class and then I use as wavetable now as wavetable the, the wavetable for the certain uh, floats array will be twice the size that's done uh, for the uh, that's, that's done to minimize the calculations uh, that uh, wavetable unit generators uh, use for interpolation because they do interpolation and that's rather important mm, affects the aesthetics so that's all I converted this stuff to wavetables then I want to record that row to the WAV files uh, with floats and forget about this code I just have wavetable files ready to be loaded into consecutively allocated buffers so the next piece of code is should be put to the super colliders startup file the startup file of Super Collider is, um, let me check this stuff, yeah it's working. The startup file of Super Collider is uh, the file placed in this directory. As, as you may see, in, in that shift, okay, as you, that shift it. as you may see in Linux it's in home then dot config uh, super collider startup scd uh, whenever the sc lang boots sc lang starts it runs the code in this file now i want to place some code in that file that would run something when the sc server gets launched yeah when i boot the server so i put this function there this fun function and then add that function to the server boot class. After running this code, whenever I start Super Collider, I, well, when I boot when I boot this Super Collider server, this code uh, will run. Now, what this code does? Uh, again, I specify the path for the whole directory with the wavetable files, and then allocate corresponding number of uh, consecutive buffers with the size twice the size of the original like these are uh, 4096 multiplied by 2 no, no, sorry, not this these guys in this directory now. ls for something, yeah these are twice the size than uh, twice the size than not these guys okay I resampled them I resampled the original web files to 4096 this is the key uh, size of those wave tables now just wave table format makes it twice for the calculation but still if that resembles some quality the quality label is this 4096 yeah not 8000 uh, uh, 192 yeah okay. 
So, for this, so, so that I would always remember what's the size, I just put it here. It's not a um, robust design, but, well, you don't need that much if you know your habits. Yeah, of course you could do a lot, but uh, as I told, I have probably 100 waveforms there, rather enough for me. <coughs> so I don't do that uh, so often. So I load, then I read the data into those file names, into those buffers, and uh, the rest is I want to have an array of buffer numbers. So that that will be the numbers that I will pass to my uh, unit generators. And just because I wanted to know what is the buffer uh, that I play now, yeah, what is the waveform that I need, and what's the name of it? How do I find it here? Yeah, I created a dictionary, sorry, dictionary on the fly that uh, tells me that has these names as keys and the buffer number as values. So if I need that, I could seek the name and then look, is, is everything. So if Super Collider does everything as I expected, so, and uh, do the waveforms actually uh, look as they were presented in this guide. Once I found that, yeah, they work as they should, now I forgot about these wave tables dictionary and I only use this uh, WT buff nums list. And that's all. That's all about the preparations. Uh, you can put that to the code and to the corresponding files and forget about it. <coughs> so to the synthesizer design. First, as usual, I add the specs, first as usual I add the specs for the NDF and then it's GUI and let's run the code. So you can see, now it's playing a single, a single waveform. If I specify a different uh, buffer number, changes the way from yeah and I can change that fast you see it cross fades through a big number of buffers like this is 40 let's go to 50 and it does that good guy now let's take a look at the code What I have here is the first uh, very simple en envelope generator. It's a percussive envelope generator that takes a trigger uh, for the gate argument. Yeah, the trigger is this impulse uh, generator, which is one and then zeros, one and then zeros, one one, and then multiple of zeros. Uh, so this trigger uh, also uh, drives the calculation of an attack and release time with this t round uh, unit generators. So t round generates <coughs> uh, values from uniform uh, uh, uniform probability distribution in the in the <coughs> range specified by the first and second argument. Okay, so it goes from 200 milliseconds to one second. Then what I do, I uh, one pole filter this uh, envelope. That's just a quick hack, but it has a bit difference. It's more universal method than dealing with the curve uh, argument for the end class, because I can actually change the uh, curve uh, that of, of the form of the signal of the envelope signal as it goes from let's say 0 to 1 yeah I can change that with the curve parameter but I can al also like uh, if it's just too sharp or too fast I can use lag which is one pole low pass filter 
in this case in the lag case and specify the length like this is 100 milliseconds it says that it will lag the step for once 100 milliseconds it will smoothen that uh, that step here's the envelope as it is and then filtered by the lag filter as you can see yeah um that's about envelope then i calculate the frag with the almost same mechanism as those t runs uh, uh, but this is not a uniform distribution this is exponential distribution that goes from 800 to uh, it's uh, 80 to 500 yeah whenever trigger comes it calculates that new value and um, <coughs> uh exponential yeah generated distance exponential well usually that depends on some uh aspects of the algorithm but this certain one will do it like this the first argument yeah so will be it will be an exponent that drives probability like from the first argument to the second one so this 50 means that the, the 80 means that the values closer to 80 will appear more often than those near to 500 so i will get more low frequency uh, values than 500 okay that's here just for testing but this could be used for a lot of reasons and actually i will make second part for this video when i will return to this randomness question because it can be and should be a part of some compositional approaches now the we ask itself the code that you see on un the uncommented code it's very simple now the slider with this buff n name controls the current uh, buffer number yeah and uh, when I change when I change the slider it doesn't it doesn't go fast yet yeah, to, to the new value it does that uh, with some inertia and again, this inertia is uh, provided by the lag argument, the one pole filter. Here, the argument is rather big, like it's almost two seconds. So that's because the array is rather big, uh, and uh, I need a bigger lag time when I go across, let's say, 20 buffers. That's just for, for fun but it uh, opens up the possibilities so that we can take a look at uh, how it affects the statics and does this method tell us something about the artistic expression you might see i have this wt buff num range one and wt buff num range zero yeah this is the array formed here I uh, specified the range of buffer numbers because they are uh, consecutively allocated I just need to know what's the minimum and maximum yeah? and so and hence this uh, variable with the array but there is a bit more to that um, since I can modulate the buffer numbers and so play with the waveforms non-linearly uh, there is a danger of me being at the biggest value yeah and then trying to get even higher yeah what i want is when i will try to do that the system would wrap the numbers so that i would go to the first one again but will never uh, go outside of the range of uh, consecutively allocated uh, numbers so what I do I use this modular operation and modular let's take a look at this line here's the line 
first the line is as it was, original one, and then with the modular <coughs> set to like 107 minus 8. This is the value. Yeah, 107 minus 8 should be 99. But it's a bit more than, yeah. But then I again add that 8, so it will be at 107. So, since I have an ability now to modulate, let's start to modulate this. And you can see. Okay, so here's the first waveform. Let's take a look at it. Here's the first one, yeah. And here's the second one. Okay. And now... Yeah? So, we use the envelope, the original envelope, to go from the value specified by the slider to the next one. Yeah? And we can actually go across several ones and even modulate back and forth this pro process. So let's add this guy. Uh, what? Yeah, we can play with the frequency and even have a modulational synthesis with this method. And uh, the main factor that affects the aesthetics now is what's in the buffers. What is the set of buffers that we use? As we can see now, I can also, I can not only specify the starting timbre for the uh, oscillator, I can also use those waveforms for an LFO signal. Yeah, And this LFO shouldn't only be a, a low frequency oscillator for uh, the modulation of some parameters, it can also be in another unit generator that we use for amplitude modulation or frequency modulation or anything else. Um, and this simple method allows us to change aesthetics rather uh, widely, rather uh, in, in, with very big contrast. So what it allows us is to have the same construction but by changing the buffers, what's in the memory, uh, the waveforms, we change how the whole system behaves. This is a very, very big advantage of advantage, advantage of the digital system. The memory. The extra stuff that I wanted to uh, add to this construction is the subtractive uh, elements. So here is the MOOC VCF, which is a, a diode ladder model of a MOOC uh, voltage controlled amplifier. What's good about it, it's not only a filter, it's also a generator. So it's non linear. So if I drive it, I will, like for the sinusoid, I will get a rich harmonic spectrum, yeah? So it's not only filters, it's also generates spectral components, uh, sums and differences in the same manner as other <coughs> modulational synthesis mechanisms do. That's called wave shaping. Now I changed the envelope to a more elaborated ADSR uh, the difference is not only that I have attack release, attack decay and release time, I also have a sustain level, which is usually a third argument. And uh, if uh, my trigger is not an impulse but uh, goes from 0 to 1 and then stays at 1 for some time, yeah. Uh, so for this time, the envelope generator will calculate ADC at the sustain level. So it will go like attack, release, and then sustain, and then release time. So I can uh, add something, I, I don't know, like imagine adding some um, uh, variable uh, with uh, pulse 
uh, signal uh, instead of impulse. I said adding, yeah, replacing the impulse with the variable with pulse signal, yeah, then you can control the sustaining uh, with this uh, envelope uh, generator. Sorry, but this envelope object might be uh, useful. Uh, and especially is useful if you use pbinds, uh, event streams, because event can generate the corresponding uh, signal with the uh, dur value, dur key of this uh, dictionary. Yeah, event is a dictionary which has just additional very nice methods for musical composition. Okay, what I wanted to explain about this filter is that for the modulation of its frequency, I also use a VASC. And now you can see this construction is simpler than this one, but it easily, sorry, but then this whole, whole this VASC uh, buffer number argument, uh, but it easily can be the same thing with modulation and all that. Uh, but since it, this is a modulational control, I don't go that far. But idea is clear, I guess. So let's take a look at how it sounds. I just like the sound of this filter. Very nice, very, very nice, ni nicely done. Um, so you can see I have a high frequency modulation done by a filter and the low frequency modulation in the timbre of the signal that is done by modulating the wave table uh, that the, this VASC uh, buffer number value with this mechanism. So this one, this is one of the examples how we can introduce the, the what is that diversity yeah, to our uh, resulting musical design uh, now <coughs> yeah the nonlinearity of this filter we can see that there is a drive in uh, specified in decibels by having this in a decibel values, I can use just the decibels to normalize the gain to some extent uh, and I normalize it by <laughs> okay. and I normalize it by negating the decibels value after the um, saturation and then calculating the dB amp calculating into the amplitude value yeah to multiply by it, uh, the processed signal. So the, the thing is that it's not quite uh, an accurate uh, accurate compensator, but it's much better than just leaving it uh, for the manual control because in most cases it's okay. In some cases uh, the signal uh, will become a bit quieter than it was because the saturation compresses the signal. Yeah, the saturation is a compression, but without any inertia. The compressor is the basically uh, a saturator, but attack and release time 
uh, uh, prevents it from uh, the big attack and release time, let's say like 20 milliseconds, prevents it from generating the um, sp new spectral components, although it still happens to some extent. Basically, the interesting saturator is a compressor, it is, is a saturator with inertia to some extent. And uh, when I will start speaking about the uh, saturators, and I will make uh, probably a good set of videos on effects and saturation in particular, because it's a very important effect, I will show different, let's say, my design approaches, or probably some other. Uh, ones made by other people that I find interesting. Okay, so this is about this uh, saturation from the from this Moog filter emulation. And the other thing that is new here is this X Fade 2. I like to use this crossfade uh, unit generator. What it does, it takes one argument. This is now uh, an original envelope taken to the power of uh, uh, to the power of value 1.4 the second one is a modulated one yeah it's a, it's an original envelope but multiplied by a viask and the third one third argument is this f mod control parameter so yeah F mod slider, yeah. Uh, the minus one for this third argument will mean the first signal. Sorry, the signal at the first uh, argument. The plus one will mean the second one. So uh, this is another rather flexible way of going from one signal to another, and you can see. I also use it here just for the envelope itself, the original envelope itself. And what I do is, uh, uh, it's a bit more interesting. I uh, crossfade from original envelope to the low frequency noise, yeah? And the frequency of the noise is controlled by the same unprocessed envelope, yeah? So it rises while the envelope rises and crossfades to the noise. But at the same time, the crossfade itself is controlled by the same envelope. So as the envelope starts, it's at minus one, and so it's an original envelope. And as it goes higher, it go it uh, crossfades to uh, um, to the low frequency noise, and the n the frequency of the noise starts to increase. The nice ways, the nice way to. Uh, play with a guest stream of uh, of a key exciter function yeah exciter function exciter function now mm, let's take a look at what we get from it yeah. You can see I go rather big uh, ranges here, yeah, minus 20 to plus, sorry, minus 12 to plus, yeah, almost 20 decibels. So that's about 40 decibels, big range. And um, uh, filter mod uh, puff number, yeah. Since the frequency is rather fast, it should affect the timbre in a bit different manner. Yeah, the last parameter FLT range, which is a filter range, stands for filter range, 
um, actually tells us uh, what will be the biggest frequency for the filters uh, center frequency and uh, or cutoff frequency yeah this is a low pass uh, resonant filter i add an offset of 50 hertz to this uh, frequency value so that it won't go lower than that although probably it won't ever go like lower than let's say 440 hertz in my case that artistic intention might might dictate a bit different approach for the artists and uh, so since the envelopes go from uh, 0 to 1 by multiplying them yeah 0 to 1 I guess this is the range oh more than 0 to 1 yeah it's uh, the original one is from 0 to 1 but the F end is from 0.5 to 1.4 so if I specify uh, 10 kilohertz here then 0.4 would say 14 kilohertz yeah so that's one of the ways to play with the frequency parameter I like it I like this approach it's nice but it depends on the filter model because with one uh, filter model it will work nice with another one probably will give you some distortion some filters don't even handle digital filters don't even ha handle the frequency modulation the filters frequency modulation uh, with with the uh, big frequencies so that should be taken care of well I don't think it's the last subtractive synthesizer I discuss probably I will I have some other designs so probably I will talk about them as well um now we hear only a the wave uh, only filters modulation. Yeah, only filters modulation. No, not only. The envelope also affects. And yeah, and as you can see, I have uh, uh, an array that gets added to the envelope, specifying the buffer number for the uh, the main VS. Uh, what it does, it generates when I start the synthesizer. And you uh, keep in mind that I, I only start it once, and then I just play with the trigger. So. Uh, this random value gets calculated only when I start the synthesis node, yeah? So only once at the beginning. And so it will be a bit different values for left and right. And so the, all the modulation that happens will be a bit different, will lag in one of the channels. And that provides some stereo information. Well, with this example it's that simple. Uh, because I want to keep it simple in order to be um, able to talk about some other stuff and keep the picture clean but of course once you make some music with it probably you would want to add some noises and any other stuff I've discussed it several <coughs> several design methods in previous videos um, I guess it's all about this synthesizer. Anything else?
Okay. Now let's do a synth with this design. Uh, the synth would only require me basically to uh, specify out unit generators for for this line instead of this line. So here is the output uh, that uh, for the direct signal and the uh, output for the effect which will be the reverberator from the previous video one of the previous videos uh, so I specify the direct uh, direct uh, variable which is a slider yeah the control signal again one one will filter it for the smoothness of operation it goes from 0 to 1 and so by subtracting it from 1 I get the uh, the balance uh, balancing result for the dry and wet signal yeah when this will be 0.5 this will be 0.5 uh, 0 0.5 as well when this is equal to 1 this is will be this will be equal to 0 very simple method very cheap very cheap one any differences yeah the difference one of the difference is that uh, the dust is now used instead of impulse and dust is the uh, impulse generator but instead of uh, generating periodic uh, impulses it will generate um, stochastical ones so that in, it means that in uh, let's say uh, let's say for the clarity this says this says us that we should have 10 impulses per second yeah and now this is the same thing 10 impulses per second but these impulses will go with the interval uh, equal to 1 divided by 10 but this one will place them randomly so that's the difference and I guess the amplitudes of the impulses also will be a bit different but this doesn't matter for the envelope generator because it will just tell it to start and not affect its amplitude I guess yeah that's how it is um I explained this I talked about this uh, so what else nothing else oh yeah the second difference is that it's now remember I told you about that in a previous example it was round in a place of LF noise uh, so now I use noises in left and right channel so that it's not always the same difference between the waveform in the left and right yeah it's always changing a bit that provides even more um, attractiveness to the modulation, yeah, to the timbre variation. Okay, now here's the difference from the previous examples. In those examples, it was uh, p binds uh, used for the sequencing for well, just small uh, examples, just to show what the sound design algorithm does. Now. Here is a bit different approach. Uh, I like it a lot. I came up with the idea a time ago. The idea was to um, allow different uh, sounding objects to uh, narrate uh, some musical phrase uh, with uh, some kind of sequencing. Yeah which means like let's imagine the musical phrase as a speech phrase yeah the first part of the first word is is said by one person the next one is uh, told by another person and so on but it's not quite a sequence it's a aleatorical thing so let's say you say the first word again you say the first word you, you say the second word yeah now you please tell the uh, next one and so on so different sounding objects narrate the same story but uh, it's always another guy speaking the next word uh, next word uh, so what I do I specify 
different uh, an array of four synths yeah and then I run the loop in which I choose randomly one of the, these four guys and uh, change its parameters it's not the the the, the story that, that, that I just uh, um, told about it's uh, just an example of this approach how I came up with it but it's just an aleatoric play around mm. and the first is the the first part is just uh, reverberated from the uh, previous example I would probably uh, I should probably launch it as a synth here yeah but I just like uh, that and def creates a group for it and so it makes it very easy to just uh, run in def and it always will be after uh, the synths that I create uh, that, that I launch uh, without any group uh, setting so they will be in a default group then will be the end def in its own group and it's all it always will be after them it's important in super collider because super collider um, has this order of execution control so if the signal goes to some other uh, synthesis node the synthesis node uh, should be the effects in synthesis node should be after the source synthesis node yeah and you can see the order of order of execution with this s dot plot tree yeah this will show us who is where let's first try one of them you can see here's the source signal the wavetable uh, synthesis node and then I have the reverberator and this is created by in def in order to monitor the reverberator okay let's listen to it I can listen for this type of, type of stuff for, for, for hours. Um, <clears throat> now you can see that this is almost as a, this is almost a ready composition. Yeah, you can see all the uh, uh, features of uh, musical composition because it gets your attention and uh, actually in a way uh, asks you to listen forward what happens next something is happening it's not uh, just a repeating thing although in the sec second part of this I will talk about the repeating stuff as well but uh, what's so special about it of, of course it's not a totally random thing 
uh, aleatoric approach means that you design carefully design those statistical distribution functions and uh, you know uh, the most uh, important from the expressiveness, expressiveness point of view uh, most important uh, aspects of this composition now wh what are the key things like let's say we would design a uh, GUI graphical user interface for this composition in order to set it up before uh, it will be started uh, the most important things that I sh think should be put there first are the wavetables of course because they specify not only the temporal aesthetics they also specify the movement yeah the modulation uh, then second is of course that's very important for us for the listeners is uh, the pitches the pitch content the musical uh, melismatic content let's say <coughs> uh, like the uh, like which ones, which uh, notes you would choose for that. This is a very simple thing. This is a uh, just one array, uh, which gets chosen randomly with the uniform random distribution. Then it's added to 60 and converted to MIDI CPS. And the two, uh, this two power uh, minus two to two, uh, actually gives us different octaves. Yeah. Uh, octave is uh, multiplying by <coughs> the powers of two so you can see what we get from this is 0 0.5 to 0 0.25 and one occasionally there should be one one yeah and even four of course two to the power of two yeah <coughs> so this set is very important here yeah and it could be not only this set it could be an array of arrays and some method to let's say stream like say going from one array to the next array yeah some conditions may maybe uh, and probably uh, conveniently be used with the uh, uh, stream class yeah and particularly uh, like psec as, as stream like this psec stuff p sec yeah and then you specify an array of arrays yeah that like every new item will be an array then another array another array yeah and then you can repeat it for some some number of cycles oh yeah okay and uh, after that it will be something like as stream stream and this would give you a routing so you would be able let's say this is a, a stream stream object like the, the assigned to the variable stream you can then say stream dot next and it will put another array on the place of this one and so on well I will show uh, I will show these uh, methods in the future videos. <coughs> yeah, as you can see, I don't. Th there are some uh, some uh, control signals that I don't even use. They are just set to their starting values, and that's for a reason. You can get totally different result if you will change this like comment these ones and uncomment on other ones it will be a bit different yeah depending on what's the actual uh, final importance of this parameter how much it affects the musical communication yeah the expressiveness and the uh, contrast which is what comes after what if you scream for example and you scream for a long time that becomes a lullaby but same as you whisper for a long time but if you talk uh, very smoothly and then occasionally start to scream that's a very big contrast yeah mm, uh, people might think you're a psycho <coughs> so but that's an important aspect of rhetoric and uh, musical expression of course musical composition so 
that's it. Some notes on musical composition uh, with this aleatoric approach. Mm, in the first, in the second video, on, I will use the same code, but but I will add something to speak about the randomness and the control of random randomness, because uh, as you might see, like. When you start to deal with aleatoric using digital systems, you, the first thing you find out is that, well, in mechano-acoustical and analog systems, we have always we always have some randomness. We always have some aleatoric stuff, but that's not quite aleatoric. It's just randomness, and you cannot take it out uh, from those systems. And you actually want them usually. You just want to control them to some extent. Yeah, with digital, you don't have it. With the technical side of things like introducing this uh, micro randomness and making an aleatoric musical uh, compositional system basically is the same same methods but applied differently to different aspects of the system uh, so we have to introduce both if we want to make aleatoric music, if we want to make just like say something, let's say neoclassical, yeah, uh, still we have to introduce randomness on a micro level, on a timbre generation level, yeah, on the level of the exciter, vibrator, resonator, the space design. Uh, so that's it. So, okay. Let's listen a little to how it behaves with three sinusoidal, with three synthesizers. Now you can see it only take one of them on every uh, iteration of this loop. Yeah, it takes only one of them. So the more guys we have, the 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 doesn't mean we have we will have the more. Uh, dynamics the more movement in this composition the movement always will be the same it's just uh, it just will increase the number of sounding objects yeah one last uh, aspect I didn't I didn't touch on this one this is also a very important thing and uh, this is uh, mm, very classical way of uh, specifying the durations uh, of the notes or the intervals between onsets. Uh, and again, as you can see, it goes with the uh, two power to something. And it's same, basically same as with octaves. What it gives us, it's this is one second, this is uh, 20, uh, 250 milliseconds, and so on. And it could be called like it could be multiplied by some value to normalize it to some BPM value. Uh, this is a um, quarter note, yeah. Uh, the half would be the half note, this is a whole note, and two would be, uh, what is that? Two holes? <laughs> okay, <coughs> let's listen to it.
Okay, this was one iteration. Yeah, we can launch it as many times as we want and uh, all the new uh, launches will give us a new composition. Uh, so, that's aleatoric. It always will have uh, different qualities. Sometimes it will probably sound uh, awful. In, uh, that depends on how you define the system. The whole those starting from your synth def and ending up with uh, this algorithm, that depends on uh, how it's all designed and uh, what you allowed it to do and what not. So because actually I don't uh, really, I didn't um, carefully specify the buffers that I want to work with. I just took the folder as it was made by the guy who posted those WAV files. Yeah, and you, you could see those like uh, clicks sometimes in the left and right channel, which might be considered a bit too aggressive. Um, even though the harmony content is rather uh, emotional and uh, not that friendly. So this probably suits nice. The whole composition fits nice here. But sometimes you could design something that would not work at all. And most of the times it will be, you don't want to listen to this. But sometimes it, uh, so sometimes it works nice. But again, well, what, what can I do? Can you do with that? Like, let's say you found one good example. Yeah, to like it's random. For, for a human, it's random. Yeah. But let's say you found some interesting result. <clears throat> and you want to be able to return to it 
yeah for later uh, in the next video I will talk about this how to deal with this stuff so that's it for now see you cheers